Shane asked the limit here. So I've created a YouTube channel to talk about steel and what damages it. And the first big question I had was, what should my first video be about? I mean, there is so much to talk about. And so in my mind, the answer was obvious. I need to start at the beginning. I need to discuss what affects the strength of steel. And to do that, I'm going to use these two bolts to begin our story today. When you buy bolts, you buy them to st standards or specifications that guarantee they have certain properties. For example, these are grade two and grade five bolts. And our grade two bolt is guaranteed to have a strength of 57,000 PSI. That means that it can hold for every square inch, it can hold 57,000 pounds. To put that into context for a bolt of this size, this is a five eighths inch bolt. That means based upon that strength that this single bolt can hold 12,500 pounds. Now, that's actually quite a bit if you think about it, right? That's like about three cars worth of weight that this single bolt can hold. But don't get too excited because that's not very strong for steel. And we start to get that impression when we look at the grade five bolt, which is a medium strength steel bolt. It can hold 92,000 PSI and converted to the size of this bolt. That means that this bolt can hold at least 20,000 pounds before it's going to experience damage deformation. Both bolts are the exact same size. They're both 5 eighths inches in diameter. They're two and a half inches in length, which means the difference in their load capacity is based upon the strength of the steel. And so the big question that we have to answer in this video is why are the strengths of the steel so different? And it's a two-part answer. The first one is perhaps the most obvious and intuitive. Obviously, the ingredients that we add to the steel is going to have a large effect on the properties of steel, including strength. So as we, as we look at these two, these two bolts, we see that the grade two and the grade five bolts have very different carbon contents. Carbon is the primary alloying element of steel. Nothing affects the strength of steel as much as carbon. And the, generally, the more carbon that we add to steel, the higher its strength potential. So the reason why our grade two bolt is not as strong and never can be as strong as a grade five bolt is that it has about a third of the carbon content and just will never have the same strength potential as a grade five bolt. But alloying is only half the equation. The other half of the equation is how are those ingredients and alloying, how are they organized within the steel? We use the term microstructure to discuss and describe that organization. Luckily, we can use conventional microscopes to look at steel and see the microstructure and, and use that to explain how everything is organized within the steel. For example, if we take that grade two bolt and put it underneath a microscope, what we'll see are two main constituents. We're going to probably what will catch your eye first is the black phase. The black phase has all the carbon. We call it perlite. And if you squint and look in at it, you'll see that there's lots of little lines. Those lines are carbides. Carbon being the primary strengthening element of steel exists as carbides, which are strong. The perlite phase has lots of carbides and therefore it's pretty strong. But the grade two bolt does not have a lot of carbon. So it doesn't have a lot of perlite. Most of its microstructure comprises of this white phase that we call ferrite that has no carbon, has no strengthening effects from carbides, and therefore it's going to be relatively weak. That microstructure looks quite different from the, from the grade five bolt. If we put that underneath a microscope, what we're going to see is a high density of evenly distributed fine dots. Those dots are the carbides. And, and we call this microstructure tempered martensite. The fine dispersion of those carbide dots uses the carbon very wisely in its strengthening effect. And this is one of the stronger microstructures that we can get of, of steel. So not only does the grade five bolt have more carbon than the grade two bolt, it uses that carbon more effectively in strengthening the bolt. Part of the reason why the two bolts have different microstructures is that they've been processed differently. The grade five bolt has been what we call quenching tempered. It's been heated up to ridiculously red hot temperatures, held for a while, 
And then when finished, it's been removed from the furnace and quenched in water or oil. Once done, it's then put into another furnace uh, at a much lower temperature. We call that one tempering, all right? So, so a grade five bolt must be tempered at a minimum of 800 degrees Fahrenheit or 427 degrees Celsius. And that combination of the red hot temperatures, quenching and tempering forms a microstructure of the evenly dispersed carbides everywhere that we call tempered martensite and gives it, gives it really, really good strength. To further illustrate the effects of microstructure, let's take that same grade five bolt and let's process it differently. So instead of doing our, you know, heat it up to the exact same temperature, but instead of taking out and quenching it, we're just gonna take it out of the furnace and let it air cool. This heat treatment is called normalization, where we heat it up to red hot temperatures, hold it for a while, and then let it air cool, which cools at a much, much slower rate. And because of that slower rate, we're gonna get a very different microstructure. If you recall, our grade five bolt that we purchased came in the quench and tempered condition. It comprised of tempered martensite, and it could hold at minimum 20,000 pounds before it's going to experience deformation. Now our little side trial here, now we would never heat treat a bolt. You'd always purchase it with that guaranteed strength requirement. But just for the sake of demonstration, we, we heated it up to the same temperature, but instead of quenching it, we had air cooled it. That slower cooling gave us a very different microstructure. If you look at it, you'll, this might even look familiar because it's the same ferrite and perlite structure that the grade two bolt had. This has more carbon than the grade two, so it has more perlite, more perlite than the than the previous bolt that we looked at. Now, this structure is not as good of use of the carbides as tempered martensite. Both these bolts are the exact same size; they have the same alloying, including carbon. But the normalization has not used the carbon as efficiently for strengthening it because the ferrite perlite microstructure is inherently not quite as strong as our tempered martensite. And because of that, this bolt in this condition can only hold 15,500 pounds. <laughs> it's funny that I use the word only, but, but still you can see it's not holding as much because of different processing, forming different microstructures, we're getting different strengths. Using the grade two and the grade five bolts, we've talked about how carbon is the primary alloying element of steel, but make no mistake, it's not the only alloying element we can add to strengthen steel. Molybdenum, chromium, nickel, these all can provide additional strength if we use them wisely to our steel. To demonstrate this, let's throw in another bolt into our mix. This is a grade 12.9 bolt, and it has a minimum strength requirement of 150,000 PSI. Finally, some real strength here. When we factor in the size of our bolt, this bolt can hold a whopping 33,000 pounds. And we're talking three times the strength now of our grade two bolt. The reason why the grade 12.9 bolt is stronger than the other two is it has additional alloying. Like the grade five bolt, it has the same amount of carbon, 0.4%. Like the grade five bolt, it's quenched and tempered. But what it has in addition is it has chromium alloying, and molybdenum alloying, which increases its strength potential beyond what, beyond what the, the steels of the grade two and grade five bolt are made of. In the end, the properties of steel that we care about, everything ranging from, from toughness to ductility to especially strength are based upon, in large, the, the alloys and ingredients we've added to the steel and the microstructure that we've established through the processing and heat treatments that we've given to it. If you begin to understand the effects of those two and how to manipulate them to your advantage, you begin to understand steel.